Hey guys, what's going on? Pete with Auto Repair Tips. In this video, working on a 2012 Jeep Patriot. Customer states that when she was coming out of the tunnel, she gave it the gas and there was no acceleration. She got to the top of the tunnel and all of a sudden, the acceleration took off and the check engine light popped on. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at that and see what's going on. Let's get into the video. All right, let's start this thing and let's see what lights are on. All right, looking at the dash, the only thing we have is a check engine light. All right, let's get the scanner on it and let's see what code's popping up. For those of you who don't know, the data link connector is located right up under here. All right, it says it's a Jeep 12 Patriot. It's got your VIN number, it's got a 2-4 engine in it. The odometer is 82962 and that looks to be correct. So we hit OK, let's display the data, go to engines, code menus, look at the codes. So we have two codes, uh, 2173, high airflow vacuum leak detected, slow accumulation, and then we have a 2110, electronic throttle body system bank one, was forced limited RPM. Let's take a second and let's just go to fix it and see what the 2173 says. Based on 850 repairs, it says it's was a throttle body, fixed it 270 times. So let's go back, let's look at the electronic throttle body and let's see what that says. And we'll go to fix it on that one. And the same thing, this is based on 1,089 repairs. It fixed it 842 times. All right, so based on that information, I know what direction to go in. I'm gonna go to the throttle body. I'm not just gonna replace it. The first thing I'm gonna do is see can I control that throttle body through this computer. All right, so what we'll do is we'll start it up. Let me look at the RPMs when we do. All right, we're sitting at 1500. It should come down on its own without even touching the gas. All right, that's already too high. It should drop down to somewhere between five and 800 RPMs. So it's not coming down to me fast enough. So let's exit this and let's go back and let's look at, uh, I believe it's, let's go to system test, I think it is. Let's take the idle air control motor. That's the IAC, stands for idle air control motor. And let's test it. This is built into the throttle body. Perform test with engine idling, hit continue. It just now dropped down to about 800 RPMs. Right now, my target speed is 800. The duty cycle is a little high, I think. The engine actual speed right now is 800. So we're gonna raise the target speed let's see if it raises up okay the engine is starting to go up by doing this what that's telling me is the computer it has the ability to control the electronic throttle body i'm going to let this car run just a few minutes and see what happens to the rpms i'm going to see if it jumps up by itself and or goes lower and we'll continue to give it the gas and see what happens catch you in a bit all right i'm going to try something guys i went ahead and let the car run for a little bit the rpms kind of stayed the same i went out there and i and i inspected the throttle body it's not cracked or damaged the wiring looks good and I have a good power and a ground going to it what I'm gonna do is I want to do a relearn on it so we're gonna do a relearn on this throttle body just to see what happens so the engine must be off the test the engine is off we'll follow the prompts it says don't touch accelerator pedal if we had issues with the wiring, you wouldn't be able to do a relearn on it. If there was issues with the computer, you wouldn't be able to do a relearn on it. That's just a little tip for you there. Press and hold the accelerator to the floor. It is on the floor. Release the pedal. Don't touch the accelerator pedal. I'm not touching it. It's like my wife always telling me what to do. So the learn is complete. Hit continue and it passed. Let's start this up. All right, the check engine light is gone. And let's check this idle out. Let's see what happens. All right, after doing the relearn, the check engine light went away. I'm gonna let it run for about 15 to 20 minutes to make sure the light doesn't come back on. Most likely, there was a glitch in that throttle body that caused that light to come on and gave her a hard time. I'm probably gonna change it because the computer is fine, the wiring is fine, everything else looks good. And looking at all the data, that's where it's taking me. And if I give it back to her now and she drives, and it does glitch out on her again while she's driving, she's probably gonna freak out. So they're, they're not that much money and they're pretty simple to put on. But before I do put it on, I'm gonna run one more test and let this car run for a little bit. All right, catch you in a bit. 
All right, guys, I'm going to do a throttle flow test, and I'll show you what that is in a minute. Let me get to it. We're going to follow the directions. Yes, I will. All right, this is your throttle position sensor, TPS. These are your volts. We're going to hit run test. Now, watch what happens. Right now, you're sitting at 0.89 volts. When I give it the gas, the volts should increase to like 4 or 4.5 volts. Okay, you ready? I'm doing a slow press of the acceleration, and it's going up slowly. And see how smooth it went up all the way? There were no spikes up or down. It went nice and smooth. If I release it nice and smooth, it's going down just as smooth as it went up. All right, guys, after running the tests, I've come to the conclusion it's definitely going to be a throttle body. It glitched on her when she was driving. If I don't put it on, most likely it's going to glitch again. It's probably on its way out. I'll get that part ordered. We'll get it here, and I'll show you where the part's located at, and I'll tell you how to do it. The part just came in. This is the part number to the throttle body. Let me show you what it looks like. And this is what it looks like. It's gonna bolt into the car just like this. There's your connector to it. And this butterfly, believe it or not, when you give it the gas, it's electronic, so it's electronically opens up. And this is what's glitching on her. So let me show you where it is. I had it apart once because I had to, I did some testing on the wires down here and check the connectors, and then I put it back together so I could start it. To get to the throttle body, you're gonna remove this cover here and the intake hose, and it's right down there. It's that chrome box right there. All right, one of the things I also like to do is because of the angle of it, and I have big hands and big bone, I remove this battery and I can get more of an angle taken out that way. Some people leave the battery in. I just prefer to remove it. It's just easier for me. So I guess it depends on your ability and your flexibility, should I say, to be able to get down in there. It's got a hold down that's down there. If you're taking one out, yeah, believe it or not, it's an American half inch. It is not metric down here. Although you could probably get a metric to fit it, but the American fits it better. When we go back with this, we're going to clean up the battery too. If you look at the corrosion all around it, that can't be good. Somebody's put another end on this side here. I really don't like doing it how they did it, to be honest with you. See this acid? If you get it on your hands and you touch your clothes and then you go to wash your clothes, it leaves holes in your pants. So make sure you wash your hands before you touch your clothes. On the battery box, there's four bolts and one nut. Remove those and the box comes straight out. Make sure before you put it back in, clean it up. Don't put it back in dirty. All right, there's two hose clamps that hold this tube on. One is here and one is way down yonder. To get the one down there, it's easier. I have an electric quarter inch drive with a long neck on it and I'm gonna feed it down in there and slowly unscrew it till it comes off. But if you don't have that, you have to use a ratchet. So I'm pretty happy that I can do it that way because it would be a pain in the butt to sit there and have to reach down there and ratchet that thing by hand. If you do a lot of work at home, they're really good to have on hand electric ratchets. The operator hose, move it out of the way this way, come in from this angle, and get your electric ratchet on it and it loosens it right up. Then we'll take it and pull the hose off right here and pull the hose off here and we will finagle it out. There's one push clip that's holding it down right here. So we have to get that off. And what I normally do is I try to get a pair of dikes and I, if it ends up cutting it, I'll just have to go back with a wire tie. But a lot of times if you get your dikes and you come in from the back side, you can wiggle it out just like that. We'll put the tube aside. That is down there. Easiest way to do is get a wire tie and tie this hose out of the way so you don't have to keep fiddling with it. If you look right down inside here, you can see the throttle body. There's a ring, a dark greasy ring around it, and that will affect your idling at idle. So if we weren't replacing it, we'd be cleaning it right now. All right, guys, when you're down this far into your engine, just take a second and look around. Make sure you don't have any corrosion, any hoses that are bad, or any wires pinching anywhere. Especially in older model cars, it's a good habit to get into. There's four 10 millimeter bolts that hold the throttle body on. Just loosen them up, take them off, and you are good to go. So looking at it, once I got the throttle body off, if you look right down inside the there, it's got a a little bit of an oil puddle. So she was probably burning a little bit of oil. We're gonna go ahead and clean that out and then go back with a new throttle body. And that's something I definitely wanna let the customer know. So this is pretty much why I move 
all this BS stuff out of the way because just getting it back there is kind of a pain in the butt. You know, it gives you room to move your elbows and whatever else you're gonna have to do. Make sure before you put a ratchet on it, get a couple turns by hand first. You don't want to be cross threading it, then you'd be replacing the intake. All right, guys, I'm gonna get the bolts tight on the throttle body. Uh, the rest of it is just reverse procedure going back with it. Once I do that, we'll go inside, do a relearn. I'll show you how to do that, and then we'll go for our test drive. All right, we're back at the screen. We're gonna do the relearn again. Don't touch the accelerator pedal. I'm not touching it. Now I gotta press and hold it to the floor. I've held it to the floor. Release the pedal. Don't touch the pedal. I'm not gonna touch it. All right, the ECT learn is complete and it passed. Sweet. All right, let's start this thing up. Ooh, that's not good. Let's clear the check engine light. Code menu, codes. Make sure there's nothing I left off. Invalid key sim. Well, I know I'm using, oh, you know what? The battery went dead and I had to jump it. So let's go back and let's clear that code out. So that code was there because the battery went dead while I was working on it. Uh, believe it or not, I accidentally left the key on. We all make mistakes. I got back in the car and it was dead and I had to charge it up for a few minutes and then jump it. And so it did not read the key correctly because we know it's the right key. And we continue to have a code. Why? Codes? No codes present. Strange. Right, let's cut it off. Cycle the key on. We're running good. Why don't we have a check engine light? And there's no codes. Well, let's check something. Go to transmission. Is there any codes in the transmission? Battery disconnected TCM terminal. Okay, I did disconnect the battery, so let's go back. Clear the codes in the transmission. Now there are no codes here. Now let's start it. All right, so evidently when the battery went dead, it popped a code in the engine control module for the key transponder, and it popped a code in the transmission. I cleared codes out of both areas and we're good to go. So let's go on our test drive. Uh, so far, no check engine light. The idle is doing just fine. It's when the AC kicks off and on, the RPMs go up and come back down. They're sticking between 500 and 1,000, so that's pretty good. I'm gonna take it up on the interstate, get hard on it, try to get up on the on-ramp, see how it does on the on-ramp. And after that, I will call the customer, we'll get it delivered, and it's another job done. All right, guys, like I said before, you know it's a good job. You know why? Because there's no bolts left over. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it for this video. I appreciate you watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Catch you later.